hate them all. I think politics is an exercise in the Wizard of Oz. Some have no brains, some have no heart, none have any courage whatsoever. But if you are moved to write a rabbi an angry letter about politics, it's David Wolpe at Sinai Temple. .org. David would love to hear from you. He really would. He really would. So please don't send angry letters. We're delighted you're here tonight. This is called Farbrengen. Farbrengen is a Yiddish word meaning a gathering. Once a month we have a Farbrengen service. We dive in very quickly. We pray very quickly through the Friday night prayers. And then we put the prayer books away and enjoy an evening celebrating all the expressions of Jewish culture. Tonight is, is this the second or third time we've done this? Third. The third time we have done an evening celebrating the great tradition of American folk music written by Jews, written for Jews, sung by Jews, things that have remotely Jewish associations. So tonight's a wonderful celebration of American Jewish culture, and we're really delighted that you're here. Shh, come on in, make yourself comfortable or uncomfortable, depending on what politics you hold. Just a couple of announcements, because what synagogue would be complete without announcements? So we're delighted you're all here tonight, and hope that you'll come back many times to share the life of prayer, learning, and celebration of Valley Beth Shalom. If you're a member of VBS, it's damn good to see you. If you're not a member of VBS, member of another shul, it's still great to see you. If you're not a member of a synagogue, all this can be yours. We'd love to have you, <laughs> really seriously. Um, tomorrow morning, Tomorrow morning we gather at 9 o'clock as we do every Saturday morning at 9 o'clock for Torah study. Um, then later in the morning you're invited to join the Neshama Minyan, a beautiful musical minyan in, with traditional learning and traditional uh, celebration and a wonderful spirit. It begins about 9.30, but anytime you get there you will be warmly welcomed and embraced. So come to Neshama tomorrow, mo tomorrow morning. On uh, Sunday, Monday to Wednesday. Um, on Wednesday night, is it the 21st already? Yeah, the 21st. It's this Wednesday night. We're going to do a little Pesach preparation. Did you know that Passover is coming? Yeah. Right, you can tell because the price of brisket's going up. You know. <laughs> right. Um, so anyway, we'd love to have you come and help getting, re help getting ready for the Passover holiday. It's Wednesday night around 7.30. We'll do some learning, a little singing, and begin thinking about the great themes of freedom, liberation, slavery, uh, and the dignity of human beings as expressed in the Passover tradition. That's on Wednesday. It's free. Everyone is invited to come, right? Next Friday night is Tamarim. A week from tonight. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, Tamarim, which is our uh, tribute to Sephardic music and Sephardic culture. Led by our artist in residence, Asher. Where are you? There there he is. Asher Levy. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful service. Begins at 6.30, but if you come at 6, we have what's called meze, which is the Ladino word for nosh, okay? beautiful layout of wonderful Sephardic foods followed by the most beautiful beautiful Sephardic music you ever heard and you're deli we're delighted to have you come uh, and join us um, and then the, the, the following morning Shabbat morning it's an interesting morning of course we'll have our normal Shabbos morning we'll have Torah study followed by prayers um, there's a very large rally going on downtown and a large delegation from VBS is going if you'd like to go with us you'll need to call the synagogue and sign up we're gathering here at VBS at 7.30 for a short Shabbat service and some bagels, and then there'll be buses taking people down to the anti-gun uh, rally uh, downtown. So those who'd like to go um, is, are welcome to go with us. That is politically relevant, but don't send me angry letters. Please send them to Rabbi Walby, okay? And then, um, and then the following week uh, is, is our, the last week before Shabbat, you gotta clean, before Pesach. You've got to clean out your house and clean out your life. And then Friday morning we'll have the Siyum. And then the Pesach begins a week from, two weeks from Friday tonight. Two weeks from tonight. Seder, two weeks from tonight. Got to clean the fridge. Okay? So we welcome everyone. We're delighted that you're here. If everyone will please stand up from your seats. Turn to the folks beside you and wish them good Shabbos. Shabbat Shalom. Welcome. Don't sit down, you're going to be sitting all night. Stand up. Stand up. Shh. Put your arms around your new friends and bring them close. 
and join us in welcoming the angels of Shabbat. Shalom Aleichem, Malachi HaSharet, Malachi Elyon. Mimelech, Malachi HaMlachi, Makadosh Baruch Hu. Boachem Shalom. Yeah. 
קבלה, גם שמחה ומצולה, תוך אמונך עם שגולה, בואי חלה, בואי חלה, חדוגי Let's hear you sing it. It's a good warm-up. Hey, 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 hey,
We're on page 30. Let's sing together. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Ve'ahavta et Adonai Elohecha Bechol Ebalcha Ubechol Nafshecha Ubechol Meodecha Vehayu harvarim ha'ele Asher anochi metzavecha Hayom al levavecha Veshinanta ham levanecha Veibarta bam Veshivtecha beveitecha Uvlechtecha vaderech Ushoch becha uvekumecha Ukshar tam leot al yadecha Vehayu letotafot bein eidecha Uchtav tam al mezuzot beitecha Uvishadecha Leman tiskeru va asitem et kol mitzvotai Vitem kedoshim leloheitem Ani Adonai Eloheitem Asher hot seiti etchem Meheret mitzrayim Liot lachem leloheim Ani Adonai Eloheitem Adonai Eloheichem, Amen. Ya da 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 da. Ya da 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 da. Ya da 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 da. Now sing with us. Yada <laughs> Ayam Lifnei Moshe
ufros aleinu sukachelo mecha baruch ataronai hapore sukachalo malenu vial kolamo israel the al please rise together we're on page 34 
Ose shalom bimroma. O ya se shalom aleinu. Ve al kol Yisrael. Ve al kol Yoshvei Tevel. Ve imeru. Tadonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Borei Peri HaGafen Baruch HaTadonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kitshanu Mamizvota Veratzavanu Veshabbat Kodsho Meahava Uvratzon Hinchilanu Zikaron lemaasei v'reishit Ki hu yom t'chila lemikra e'kodesh Zecher l'itziat mitzrayim Ki vanu v'acharta v'yotanu k'idashta V'kol hamim Shabbat Kodshecha Be'ahava Uvratzon Inchaltanu Baruch Atah Adonai Mekadesh HaShabbat עלינו לשבח לאדון הכל, לתת גדולה ליוצר ראשית, שלא עשנו כגויי הארצות, ולא שמנו גם איש בכל האדמה, שלא שם חלקנו כהם, וגורלנו ככל ההמונה. כתוב בתורתך אדוני ימלוך לעולם בעד ונאמר והיה אדוני למלך על כל הארץ ביום ההוא ביום ההוא יהיה אדוני אבד ושמו Observe yard site or still in mourning for a loved one. If you're reciting the Kaddish in memory of a loved one, please remain standing and open your prayer book to page 52. 
It's a custom in our community that if you find yourself sitting near someone who's standing up by themselves, we'll ask that you stand up with them so that no one grieves or mourns alone when friends and community are present. The words of mourners, Kaddish Yitkadal v'yitkadash Shemei Rabbah. V'almad divrach hirutei v'yamlich malchutei v'chaye echon uvyom echon v'chaye dechol beit Yisrael. V'agalao v'zman kari v'yimru amen. Yehei Shemei Rabbah mevarach le'olam o'me olmaya. Yitbarach v'yishtabach v'yitpa'ar v'yitramam v'yitnasei. Viet Hadar, Viet Alev, Viet Halal, Shemei de Kudsha, Brechu. Le Elam in Kol Birchata, Vishirata, Tush Bechata, Venechamata, Damiran, Bealma, Vimru, Amen. Yehe Shlama Rabba Min Shemaya, Vechaya Malenu, Vial Kol Yisrael, Vimru, Amen. Ose Shalom Bim Ramav, Huyase Shalom, Alenu, Vial Kol Yisrael, Vimru, Amen. Please be seated. Shabbat Shalom to everyone. First thing we need to do is look down your row and find the most physically fit person on the row. That person who spends a fortune on Equinox every month and pass all the prayer books to that person. And then that person bring the prayer books up to the front, put them on this table right here. Only the starkers, the strong ones, the physically well, well off, the gifted, the blessed, people whose knees still work. keep getting better and better that's right there you go there you go Good evening, good evening. Welcome once again to Shabbat Fabrengen. It's the third edition of Jews in the tradition of American folk music. Now, as you all know, the American folk music tradition began with people who believed that private property was somewhat suspect. So, we don't have enough songbooks. If you're sitting next to someone who will share with you in the matter of collective radicals everywhere, pass your songbook back. Keep passing them back so the folks in the back get them so everyone gets one. We all have enough. There's enough for everyone in this world. You don't have to hold on too tight. How's that? Just enjoy the show. You can sing along. The words really don't matter anyway. There you go. There you go. Thank you for being so kind. <laughs> right, hang on. I'm going to give a long, long, long introduction. I'm going to say a lot. Shh. Come on back, come on back. Shh. So why were so many of these songs written by Jews? Well, the easy way is to say we're a minority and we have a particular sensitivity to the plight of the vulnerable and the powerless in society. And when you have no other way of expressing that sense of vulnerability and powerlessness, when you have no real power, you write songs. That's the power. Pete Seeger used to say that his guitar was the most powerful weapon for peace he ever found. Another way to think about it is that Jews, because of the Passover tradition that you'll learn about on Wednesday night if you come hear the talk, Jews have always had a suspect, a suspicion of authority. Too many people with too much power, too people, people with too much who are in charge too much, people who enjoy being in charge too much, always made us. Hmm, a little nervous. And the way that you say that is by, well, writing songs. But the best explanation came from the great psychoanalyst Sigmund Freud, who grew up and did most of his career in Vienna and was a very proud Jew. 
member of the B'nai B'rith, but had a very low opinion of religion, but very proud Jew. And so he was asked in an interview late in his life, what his Jewishness meant to him and what, why it contributed to his theory of psychoanalysis and why it was that all of the original psychoanalytic circle, with the exception of Carl Jung, who was the Shabbos guy, <laughs> why all of the early psychoanalysts were Jews. And he said something very profound. He said, because being a Jew puts me slightly on the outside. And because I'm slightly on the outside, I can see what others can't see. And I can say what others can't say. And I understand things about the human condition that a person who is an insider will never notice and never understand. And I understand how a society works in a way that an insider will never see and never understand. And it gave me permission to speak the truth. And that's why so many of these great, great, great songs, both political and personal, were written by a people that were always on the outside looking in, who could speak the truth and know the truth and share the truth that no one else could see and no one else had the power to do. And tonight, well, tonight we celebrate that great tradition. Cantor Baron. Ready, guys? One, two, three. One, two, three. <laughs> Come gather around people wherever you roam And admit that the waters around you have grown And accept it that soon you'll be drenched to the bone If your time to you is worth saving Then you better start swimming or you sink like a stone For the times they are a change Writers and critics who prophesize with your pen And keep your eyes wide, the chance won't come again And don't speak too soon, for the wheel is still in spin And there's no telling who that it's naming For the loser now will later to win For the times they are a change Fathers throughout the land And don't criticize what you can't understand Your sons and your daughters are beyond your command Your old road is rapidly aging Please get out of the new one if you can't lend your hand For the times they are a change Hope you all have booklets and you're all singing along. And can everybody hear okay? Yeah, great. So, you know, here at Valley Beth Shalom, we don't just do things. We don't just get up here and sing songs. We don't just pray. We don't just do holidays. But we learn. 
We learn about things and we study and we think about things. And so uh, in that spirit, I've invited uh, one of America's really foremost scholars in the folk era. Um, Who are the other three? <laughs> well, I'm five most, okay. Five most uh, uh, scholars of American folk music. And uh, I know this, uh, that he's got experience in this area because we kind of grew up together uh, to about 5'5". Five, five. And, uh, and, uh, uh, and he, uh, he and I used to hang out a little, at a little folk club in Cleveland together uh, where they, uh, you could hear the, uh, the likes of um, uh, Judy Collins. And Jose Feliciano actually used to play down there in this little basement place. And uh, Buffy St. Marie. Uh, and Gordon Lightfoot, and uh, everybody but Bob Dylan. Everybody but Bob Dylan. That's right. And uh, I was there the night uh, Phil Oaks played and got four standing ovations and four encores. Anyhow, uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to my friend David Booten. Let's give him a VBS welcome. Thank you. It's uh, it's great to be back in Encino. Uh, I was in Sherman Oaks today, so it's <laughs> great to be back here. And uh, Phil didn't mention that I'm, uh, I've been working on a book for about two years now, and I'm almost done. I'm, I'm really happy because now I can take it back to the library and get another one. <laughs> <laughs> which, uh, which reminds me, actually, I, I, I'm kinda, I, I don't think I told you this. I, I just uh, signed a record deal with Columbia for six albums, and uh, all I have to do is buy six more in the next year. <laughs> I think it's I think it's a great deal, really. Uh, you'll know first of all, you'll notice uh, you won't notice yet, but by the end of the night, you'll notice that we're not doing three of the songs that are in your booklets, and if you really want to hear them, uh, you know, go home and sing them yourself. So. <laughs> That's, that's why they're in the book, so you can do that. Now the opening song, of course, was uh, The Times They Are Changing by Bob Dylan. Change in, I mean, by Bob Dylan. And uh, he wrote that song in the early 60s, but it is still as uh, meaningful and true as it was back then, which I guess means that the times are always changing. So that's probably a good thing. And it's appropriate to start with the Dylan song because he started the whole singer-songwriter movement, um, except that he didn't. Uh, which, but we'll, uh, we'll get more into that later. Um, but still, it wouldn't have continued without him, so we're going to do another one by Bob Dylan. I see a lot of today in a song that was written like 40 years ago. Oh, the time will come up when the wind will stop And the breeze will cease to be a breathing Like the stillness in the wind before the hurricane begins The hour that the ship comes in Oh, the seas will split and the ship will hit And the sand on the shoreline will be shaken And the tide will sound and the winds will pound And the morning will be breaking Oh, the tar fishes will laugh as they swim out of the path And the seagulls, they will be a-smiling And the rocks on the sand will proudly stand she comes in And the words that are used For to get the ship confused Will not be understood As they're spoken For the chains of the sea Will be busted in the night And be buried at the bottom Of the ocean Oh, a song will lift that the mainsail shifts, boat drifts on to the shoreline, and the sun will respect every face on the deck, the hour that the ship comes in, and the sands will roll out of the pirate boat, for your weary toes to be a touching, and the ship's wise men will remind you once again. That the whole wide world is watching Oh, 
think they're dreaming. But they'll pitch themselves and squeal, and they'll know that it's only the hour that the ship comes in. And they'll raise their hands, saying, we'll meet all your demands. But shout from the bow, your days are numbered. And like their walls dry, they'll be drowned in the tide. And like a lion, they'll be conquered. So if you're reading along the words there and you are confused about the ending, where one side surrenders and says, we'll meet all your demands, but the other side, side decides to kill them anyway. I'm afraid no one up here can help you because uh, it's just uh, no one knows what that means. I went to a Rosh Hashanah service uh, a couple of years ago that was led by a rabbi, a friend of mine in Cleveland, and he used that song as the basis for his sermon, quoting from it uh, you know, frequently. And um, except, except he didn't mention anything about the end of the song. But all through his sermon, I was thinking, oh, great. Now I can finally find out what that means and how it relates to Judaism and all this stuff I've been wanting to know for 40 years. And he just totally skipped it. And at, after the service, I said, but you didn't mention the ending. What does it mean? And he says, I have no idea. <laughs> he says, I just, uh, I just ignored it. So, as the old expression goes, only Dylan knows. So here, uh, oh, you know, I would mention before that uh, I, I said that Dylan was the uh, originator of the singer-songwriter movement, and m most people think, most people who think anything about it, think that he was, but that's not really true. Um, but the reason he was so significant was because he was so successful, because it's always about money unfortunately, and, uh, but then people realized that, um, you know, I mean, he, he just wrote really great songs, and people realized that it was about the songs at that point. If you wrote great songs, you didn't have to be a great singer in the classic sense. <laughs> so from that point on, everybody became a songwriter, except that uh, most people forgot it, the part about writing great songs, but still, that was, that was what the way it, it went. However, Tom Paxton, you know the name Tom Paxton? A smattering of applause. Um, not only wrote great songs, but he was a, a good singer as well. And he recorded his own songs, a whole album of his own songs, about a year before Dylan did. Actually, a couple years before Dylan did, because Dylan's first album only had one or two original songs. So Tom Paxton really... Uh, was the first, except that he wasn't either, but I'll get into that later. <laughs> um, so we're going to do a Tom Paxton song. You know a lot of Tom Paxton songs, whether you know his name or not, uh, like The Last Thing on My Mind and uh, Ramblin' Boy. Here's to you, my Ramblin' Boy. And uh, he wrote the, uh, my dog's better than your dog. <laughs> and uh, that Irish Rovers song that they do every St. Patrick's Day. Uh, uh, the, uh, that, that, that one. <laughs> and uh, so we're going to do one that's about um, what many songs of that era were about, which was finding ourselves and being lost and, and looking for ourselves. And it's called, I Can't Help But Wonder Where I'm Bound. One, two, three. It's a long and dusty road It's a hard and a heavy load And the folks that I meet ain't always kind Some are bad and some are good Some have done the best they could Some have tried to ease my troubling mind And I can't help but wonder where I'm bound Been wandering round this land, just to doing the best I can. 
trying to find what I was meant to do. And the people that I see look as worried as can be. And it looks like they're wandering too. Sing with us. And I can't help but wonder where I'm bound. Had lips like cherry wine, and the way she loved me drove me from insane. But I was too blind to see she was drifting away from me. And my good gal went off on the morning train, and I can't help but wonder where I'm bound. Started out to roam, and I hear he's out by San Francisco Bay. And sometimes when I've had a few, his voice, voice comes, comes ringing, ringing through, and I'm going out to see him some old day. Sing with us. Oh, I can't help but wonder where I'm bound, where I'm bound. Can't help but wonder where I'm bound. If you see me passing by And you sit and you wonder why And you wish that you were rambling too Nail your shoes to the kitchen floor Place them up and bar the door Thank the stars for the roof that's over you And I can't help but wonder where I'm bound However, before Tom Paxton, there was Bob Gibson. Uh, do you know the name Bob Gibson? And uh, Bob Gibson is uh, maybe the most famous folk singer you've never heard of. Uh, he was a great song interpreter, and but he was always also writing his own songs long before Paxton and Dylan, and at a time when it was actually not cool to write your own folk songs. Uh, folk purists really disliked it. And uh, they liked, disliked it when people who called themselves folk singers wrote their own songs, except in the case of religious songs. Um, I guess because no one wanted to be on the wrong side of that. you know. And this was the era, uh, soon after the era of Joseph McCarthy. And to appear anti-religious was to also imply you might be a communist or something. So people who wanted to write folky songs, a lot of them wrote religious themed ones. And, uh, and now I will say that Bob Gibson probably didn't care much about any of that stuff. And he wrote all kinds of songs, many that weren't religious themed. But this is a religious place, I hear. Um, by the way, I, I, have a, uh, I have a joke. Uh, but first I want to ask, are, are there any Jewish people here? <laughs> Oh, well, never That's mind. Never mind, I, I better not do it. So here's uh, one of the religious kind of songs that Bob Gibson wrote. Well, 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 who's that calling? Well, 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 hold my hand. Well, 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 night is a falling. Spirit is a moving all over this land. Well, 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 who's that calling? Well, 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 hold my hand. Well, 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 night is a falling. Spirit is a moving all over this land. God told Noah. Built it out of hickory bark, rain 
a few times, but Cantor Barron actually knew him. So um, you want to say anything about Bob Gibson? Sure. So um, that little basement that we used to play in was owned by a guy named Stan Kane, and Stan eventually became my manager. And Stan connected uh, Bob Gibson. Bob Gibson was playing in, uh, in Cleveland, where I was living at the time, and my partner and I uh, were picked as his opening act for a concert that uh, Stan was producing. And Bob liked what we did, and he said, you know, you guys should come to Chicago with me and play there. And so uh, we, we went to the Earl of Old Town. Anybody know the Earl of Old Town or any Chicagoans here? Yeah. And my wife. Yeah. <laughs> well, she's waving like that because the Earl said, we really like you guys. You need to play at another place called Sylvester's in town. So we went over to Sylvester's, and there I met my wife. So... So Bob was very uh, important to me, and, and we stayed at Bob's house for weeks, and uh, we wrote songs together, and uh, it was, uh, I, I don't think I really appreciated then what I do now, the, uh, what an uh, important voice in, in music, and in, particularly in folk music, Bob Gibson was, so, very close friend. It was a coincidence that you met your wife there. I mean, you, you didn't even know she was going to be there? <laughs> funny. Funny, how you, funny who you run into. Uh, However, <laughs> before those days, Bob Gibson worked for a few years with a duo, as a duo with a guy named Hamilton Camp. He was known as Bob Camp then. They were known as Gibson and Camp. I don't know how you come up with these wacky names, but uh, they um, were extremely influential. I mean, they only did maybe one or two albums. They did a live album at, at the Gate of Horn in Chicago, and it was something that all other folk singers listened to. And, um, and it sold well, too. And then Hamilton Camp went on to have a fairly successful solo career. Um, he was also an actor, and you, you have seen him in movies, but you have no idea that he was always playing bit parts, but really well. He was on MASH, too. He was on MASH. He was uh, Mary Tyler Moore's date one time. He was uh, in the Heaven Can Wait. He was one of the butlers with Warren Beatty. He's, he's the butler who laughs and when, when Warren Beatty says, oh, do I sail? 
because he puts on a, like a sailor suit and he says, oh, do I sail? Because warm, yeah, it's a long story. Um, so, uh, so if you ever see that movie again, wa watch for that one scene. Hamilton Camp starts to laugh and Warren Beatty looks at him and he stops. I just, uh, I thought it was funny. <clears throat> Can we take this whole scene again? Wait, this isn't live, is it? Can we cut this out? Actually, I have to tell you, we are live streaming tonight. So oh. say hi to the folks at home. It's probably three or four people watching. <laughs> so I'm going to do his uh, Hamilton Camp's best known song. It was covered by artists ranging from Richie Havens to Gordon Lightfoot uh, to even Quicksilver Messenger Service. And it's one of those songs that no one can say exactly what it means. But if you listen to or read the words, you will find meaning in them. Just don't tell me what they are. Turn around, go back down, back the way you came. Can't you see that flash of fire? CDs after the show. I've got I've got uh, Dylan and the Beatles and Rolling Stones and uh, I got all kinds of CDs. You know, they're in the Cindy has a few as well. Trunk of my car out there. Just meet me out in the parking lot. And take care of it. But however, though, before Bob Gibson and Camp, there was and Dylan and Paxton, there were the Weavers. And uh, the Weavers had a tremendous success interpreting folk songs, and they even had a number one record in 1951, a song by Lead Belly called Goodnight Irene. And uh, we're not going to do that song. <laughs> and uh, they performed in the top nightclubs all over the country uh, until they ran into that um, Joseph McCarthy thing that I mentioned earlier, and they got blackballed and uh, suspicion of being communist sympathizers, which they were. And uh, all four, four members uh, went off on their own, and three of them wrote songs uh, that they sang and other artists sang. And um, we're going to do one by 
one of the original members, Fred Hellerman. And it's one of those religious theme songs again. And uh, the, probably the most recognizable version was done by uh, Peter, Paul, and Mary. of hit singles, an, an Israeli song sung in Hebrew. And uh, you can actually see a YouTube, on YouTube, you can see a video of the Weavers doing the song in the 50s, early 51, I guess. And uh, Lee Hayes of the group introduces it and said, here's a song from that brand new country of Israel. And uh, you know this song. So, um, so yeah, and then take a part. Out. We're going to do it in three parts. So join together and say na. <laughs> Say, 
So Pete Seeger of the Weavers changed my life one day. I went to hear him, uh, I live in Cleveland, and, I, and the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is there, and so I get to hear a lot of people speak that you wouldn't hear normally. And uh, Pete Seeger spoke there, and then there was a question and answer period after that. And um, someone asked him, uh, with all the problems in the world, where do we start? And he said, you start in your own community. You do whatever you do, and uh, it will spread from there. So I started getting involved in a lot of small organizations, and I offered my services, whatever I could do, and I got on boards of organizations and committees and things, and it got to the point where the phone would ring and my wife would answer and say, it's for you, tell them no. So, but I really took Pete to heart. Maybe, maybe it took it a little too far. But um, so what Pete said made a lot of sense, and we we can all do that. You know, if you think you if you think you can't do anything, you can. You you can do what you can do, and somebody will need that help somewhere. Um, so Pete wrote songs like uh, that everybody knows, like "Where Have All the Flowers Gone," and the Hammer song. Uh, well, by the way, we're not doing any of these songs. But we uh, them last year. <laughs> uh, turn, but you can turn, imagine turn. them, you know. Remember the birds? The birds made famous turn, 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 and <clears throat> and a lot of other songs. And here's one that, oh, I'm singing this one. Here's one that he wrote that was um, made famous, really, by his good friend, Woody Guthrie's son, Arlo. And I'll talk more about Arlo later. <laughs> This is easy to sing along with. It's kind of repetitive, pretty but repetitive. And you'll, if you don't know it, you'll you'll get it within, uh, well, somewhere near the end of the song. No, some you'll 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 catch on.
So Arlo Guthrie, many people don't realize that Arlo Guthrie is Jewish. And um, his, his mother was Jewish. Woody Guthrie was not, in case that shocks you at all. But um, Arlo had a bar mitzvah and everything. And in fact, he tells the story about how his mother found a rabbi to come to their apartment in Brooklyn and give him bar mitzvah lessons. And a few years ago, I mean a few years later, he uh, was surprised to see that rabbi in the news when, uh, when Meyer Kahani was convicted of domestic terrorism, <laughs> the first of about 70 arrests, oh, both here and Israel. Anyway, Arlo, of course, had a big hit when he uh, was 18 with Alice's Restaurant. So we're going to do that for the rest of the night. No, uh, <laughs> and by the way, uh, I'll give you some advice. If you're ever, uh, just, uh, you know, I, I learned the hard way, but if you're ever opening for Arlo Guthrie, don't end your set with Alice's Restaurant. <laughs> just a little advice. Um, so he had this big hit with Alice's Restaurant, and then he had kind of a, a lull in his career, you know, trying to find good songs, and he was playing in a little club in Chicago. He was uh, taking a break between sets, and he was sitting at the bar, and a guy comes up with a guitar, and which happens often to people who play in clubs, and he says, I got a song for you. And Arlo says, well, I'll tell you what, if you can, if you will buy me a beer, and if you can sing that song before I finish the beer, I'll, li I'll listen to it. And so um, Steve Goodman played him City of New Orleans, and that totally restarted his career, you know, forever. So that's what we're going to do. Riding on the city of New Orleans, Illinois Central. Games with the old men in the club car. Many a point ain't no one keeping score. Pass the paper bag that holds the bottle. Feel the wheels are up beneath the floor. And the sons of the Pullman porters and the sons of the engineers ride their father's magic carpets made of. Mothers with their babes asleep rocking to the gentle beat and the rhythm of the rails is all we hear. Sing it. Good Lord in America, how are you? Say, don't you know me? I'm your native son. I'm a trailer called the city of New Orleans. I'll be gone five hundred miles. Well, it's night time on the city of New we're changing cars in Memphis, Tennessee. Halfway home, we'll be there the morning. 
through the Mississippi darkness rolling down to the sea. And all the towns and people seem to fade into a bad dream. And all steel rails still in the news. The conductor sings his songs again. The passengers will ease your frame to the strain. Got the disappearing railroad blues. Sing it. Good night, America. special guest tonight, and I'll tell you about him as he makes his way up here. Uh, when I was a kid, I, I got interested in folk music um, in 1958. I wasn't even born yet, and I don't know how. I, I just uh, was very precocious and got into it. Uh, luckily, I had an uncle in the record business who, who gave me stacks of albums and anything I wanted. So as soon as uh, Kingston Trio's Tom Dooley came out, I got interested in folk music. We're not doing that song, so hold your... Next year, Tom. Uh, yeah, next year. In quotes. Uh, and um, I, so I really, I, I really had just about every folk album that came out from 1958 on. And in 1960, maybe, 60, 61, first album? 59. Um, I got this album called Art and Paul on Columbia Records. And I had, I was young, but I had heard a lot at that point. I had heard every, everything there was, including the stuff from before I was born, Woody Guthrie and the Weavers and Burl Ives and, you know, Odetta and all those people. I heard everything. And I heard this Art and Paul album, and it was really the most progressive folk album I'd ever heard. And I listen to it now, and it still is. And, you know, when I hear it, I see somebody nodding. Are you familiar with this group, Art and Paul? I'm just nodding. Oh, she's, no, I'm sorry, she's nodding off. <laughs> um, and um, so I thought this was the greatest group in the world. And then I noticed... Uh, they put out one more album, and then I noticed that Art uh, showed up and the original uh, New Christy Minstrels group, and I had all their albums. And then I saw his name on various other things, producing records, uh, once you work your way out here. Uh, so I would, he, he happens to live nearby. Uh, or maybe I shouldn't say that. He doesn't live anywhere near here. Uh, he lives in Chicago, actually. And... Um, I, he's going to do some of his songs and some new Christy Minstrel stuff, and he is Art Podell. He's right here. And by the way, Art, Art Podell uh, played the part of Art in Art and Paul. So. So. Is this okay? Thank you, Dave. Thank you. This is a wonderful place. I ran into a member of your congregation that was one of my classmates at the Yeshiva of Flatbush in Brooklyn, New York. Can you, can you believe that? Sitting right over there, hey, Norm? Norm, Norm Raffish. Came over to me and said, I'm Norman Raffish. I said, from the Yeshiva of Flatbush? I'm telling you. 
Brooklyn. Okay. Um, this song is for all the uh, the great musical souls that have left us and uh, the spirit of hope and beauty that waits to be awakened in all of us. Sometimes I hear it in the strangest places and I wonder where it's been. And in the time, between the time, I see a shadow move while the music fades out and in. And sometimes I wake up in the strangest places and I wonder where I've been. And in the time, between the time, between the time, between the time, the gypsy sings again pearl that sleeps beneath the sea the flame that burns inside the heart that's what you are I turn around and you will come I did without you for so long Long to hear the gypsy song. Golden apples of the sun. The light that lives inside a star. That's what you are. I turn around. Gypsy song. And sometimes I wake up in the strangest places and I wonder where I've been. And in the time, between the time, between the time, between the time, the gypsy sings again. Enough quiet, enough quiet. You can't be a folk singer unless there's at least some sort of message that you sing, something, uh, some activist or some cause or something. My first political song was uh, String Along With Art. String Along With Art. It went on like that, String Along With Art, then String Along With Art and Stan. It was my theme song for my candidacy for president, and it got me uh, elected as the second national president of the United Synagogue Youth back in 1952. <laughs> my partner, my, my vice presidential candidate was Stanley, Stanley Cohn. He played the banjo, I played the guitar. And um, I turned out to be a folk singer, and if you want to know what, ended up, what Stanley ended up doing, it's simple. Just, uh, just go to Google and ask who invented genetic engineering, and you'll see a picture of Stanley Cohen. <laughs> Unfortunately, <clears throat> his banjo playing has suffered from neglect. 
And uh, some people have no priorities whatsoever. I don't know if you ever did. However, this song deals with today's issues, just like Woody Guthrie sang, Talking Blues. That's what I do, too. And so, um, <clears throat> if you'll excuse me. I opened the paper to the news today. Half of Antarctica has floated away. If this keeps up, we'll have enough ice to ski in Hawaii. Won't that be nice? It's getting warmer. Then again, maybe not. The argument's heating up a lot. Criers, deniers, young and old, just like the planet, getting hot and cold. So blame it on the Russians, blame it on the press, blame it on religion or CBS, blame it on the sunspots or the deep blue sea, blame it on your grandma, don't blame me. Seems addiction's on the rise in the land and the price of marijuana's just getting out of hand. So get your flu shots now before it's too late while Congress is tied up in endless debate. Yeah, the health care mess is just changing fast. Got to do something about it or a bill's got to be passed. So if you... Uh, Call your doctor or call 911 and a politician shows up. Run. Blame it on the Russians. Blame it on the press. Blame it on Limbaugh or PBS. Blame it on Rachel or the deep blue sea. How about your grandpa? Just don't blame me. North Korea is launching a long-range missile, and we sit here and hope for it to fizzle. I tell you, if it hits California, have no fear. We'll have enough guacamole to last a year. And about that wall on the southern border, 3,000 miles over land and water. Brick and mortar from uh, American mines and if Mexico pays for it better get some drapes and some blinds blame it on the Russians and their cyber crimes blame it on Fox or the New York Times blame it on Twitter or the deep blue sea blame it on Facebook The news just reported that the news is fake. So what the heck does that mean, for goodness sake? It certainly confuses a logical soul. I think we may be looking at a real black hole. Thank you, Stephen Hawking. God bless you wherever you are. Blame it on the Russians. Blame it on the press, blame it on religion, or CBS, can't blame it on OJ, they'll just set him free, blame it on Donald, or Vladimir, or a statue of Robert E. Lee, whatever you do. Okay, it's time for us to sing. I was fortunate enough to be part of a recording group and uh, played the guitar and did some of the arranging on this song. And if you remember it, you can sing it along. It's uh, probably one of the prettiest songs I've ever recorded. I did not write it. I wish I had. And my lovely wife, Judy, is going to sing harmony with me and everybody else.
Today, while the blossoms still cling to the night, I'll taste your strawberries, I'll drink your sweet wine, a million tomorrow shall pass away, ere I forget all the joy. Christy Minstrels recorded, and this was written by Arlo Guthrie's father, Woody Guthrie. Um, he wrote dozens of songs. He actually didn't write songs, he wrote poems, like uh, about 2,000 of them, and uh, he set uh, dozens of them to music. The melodies were often uh, usually borrowed from other places, but he wrote, uh, wrote all these poems, set them to music. And this land is your land became uh, probably his best known song. Everybody has heard the, uh, the first three verses, but most people, or many people, have not heard the last three or four verses. And um, they, uh, without those verses, the song just sounds simply patriotic. And uh, it's not that it's not patriotic, but um, it is sort of a protest song in a way. There, are, At least there are messages in the last few verses. So we're going to do all the verses. Uh, what key is it? A quick story. Uh, we recorded, the New Christian Mestrels recorded it, and we had a big hit record with it. Columbia Records said, we don't want you to do that song. Uh, it's, you know, there's no reason to do it. And we decided to release it. 
And the day after we released it, the Cuban Missile Crisis occurred, and the song went to number one. Wow. <laughs> this land, land is yours.
Art Codell. And Judy. Thank you, Judy. Thank you, Art. Thank you. Can we stick around a couple more minutes? A few more tunes? Okay, great. So you want to hear one more song? Actually, do you want to hear like six more songs? <laughs> they're here, they're here. Okay. So uh, you can consider this our encore from this point on. <laughs> so I wanted to point out something. Uh, well, first of all, Phil Oaks. You know the name Phil Oaks? Um, he was possibly the most prolific protest songwriter of the 60s. And he wrote anti-war songs and uh, pro-civil rights uh, songs that every folk artist sang. And he grew up in the New York area, but he uh, got his professional start where Cantor Barron and I grew up. Because uh, his parents, I'll tell you. I'm glad you asked me that. Uh, he, uh, his, his parents moved to Cleveland Heights, which is where we're, yeah. are you from Cleveland Heights? All right. Well, see me later. Did you go to Heights? Did, did you go, go to Heights? Heights? Hi? Oh, wow. Great. We both did. Yeah, no, I didn't, you notice I didn't ask. <laughs> you won't ask me either, right? Uh, yeah, I went to, well, I was enrolled at Heights. I, <laughs> That's true. So, uh, so his parents moved to Cleveland Heights uh, right when he was about to go to college, and he got accepted to Ohio State University, where Cantor Barron went to school. And go. <laughs> no, no, Buckeyes. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Buckeyes. That's like the stupidest mascot ever, right? <laughs> and they, play, they, they play. They uh, play. Who's who's out here? Is the Trojans? Uh, Trojans. USC. Yeah. They play USC. And the guy, a guy comes out in armor and a lance on a horse, and Brutus Buckeye runs out. A guy, a guy, in a, a guy in a Buckeye head, you know, <laughs> putting fear into everyone's hearts. Anyway, Phil Oaks went to Ohio State, and he got teamed up. Uh, uh, his first roommate was a guy named Jim Glover, who was also from Cleveland Heights, who I also knew. And uh, Jim Glover, and he became a duo. Well, first of all, Jim Glover taught him how to play guitar, got him to sing, got him into politics. And, uh, and then they formed a duo appropriately called the Sundowners, because Phil Oaks was always depressed. So I thought it was, a, thought it was funny that his group was named the Sundowners. And um, they played around Columbus. And then Jim Glover wanted to quit school and go to New York, which he did, but Phil Oaks didn't, didn't want to. And he came back to Cleveland Heights uh, trying to figure out what to do, and he was asked to play at this club called Farragher's, which I think uh, Art played at. And um, he didn't want to do it at first, but then they told him he would be opening for Bob Gibson, which, whom you may remember from eight songs ago. And uh, he uh, said he would do it. He opened for him. And while he was playing, it was a week or so, he wrote his first two songs with Bob Gibson. And uh, we're not going to do those. What we're going to do, one of his most famous uh, protest songs. And the reason I wanted to put it right next to, um, what did I want to put it next to? What did we just do? <laughs> this land. This land. This, this land. land. Just then what year did you oh, go to yes. <laughs> yes, that's why. Um, can, can we take this whole scene again? Um, is because, as I said, Woody Guthrie wrote the first three verses, and it just sounds like a patriotic song. Then he put in these little, uh, you know, critical sort of verses. And that's what Phil Oakes did. I guess uh, I would have to imagine that he learned that from Woody Guthrie. And uh, this next song is like that, too. It sounds very patriotic. And uh, it is. I mean, it's not it's not, not patriotic. Um, and so here it is. So listen, listen for the message in the, the last verse. 
Come on and take a walk with me through this green and growing land. Walk through the meadows and the mountains and the sand. Walk through the valleys and the rivers and the plains. Walk through the sun. that Phil Oaks wrote, someone once asked him why he hated this country so much. He said, I don't hate this country. I love this country. If you have kids and you scold them or criticize them, it's not because you hate them. It's because you love them and want them to be the best they can be. So that's what he was doing. And, uh, but he also wrote a few songs that were not protest songs. And uh, I'm going to do um, one of his best, in, in my opinion. And it's a song that was uh, actually made popular by his former partner, Jim Glover, with Jim and Gene. They recorded it. And um, I was lucky enough to sing this song with Jim Glover just a couple years ago at a La Cave, La Cave is the club that we were talking about, at a La Cave reunion. <laughs> Shadows 
that shine Till one day I returned And found they were the victims of the vines Of changes The world spinning madly It drifts in the dark Swings through a hollow of haze A race around the stars A journey through the universe A place of changes Moments of magic will glow in the night all fears of the forest are gone but when the morning breaks they're swept away by golden drops of dawn of changes passions will part to a strange melody as fires will sometimes burn cold like petals in the wind we're puppets to the silver strings of souls of changes. Your tears will be trembling, now we're somewhere else. One last cup of wine we will pour. by my side, come as, as close, close as I can, sharing a memory of gray, and wonder in my words, and dream about the pictures that I play, of changes. Thank you. Uh, we're running a little short on time, so I'm gonna keep th this. Uh, I'm gonna keep this brief. Paul Simon. That's it. That's it. That's it. He was Jewish. I'm sitting in the railway station, got a ticket for my destination. Uh -huh. On a tour of one night stands My suitcase and guitar in hand And every step is neatly planned For a poet and a one-man band Homeward bound I wish I was Homeward Where my love lies waiting silently for me Every day is an endless stream of cigarettes and magazines And each town looks the same to me The movies and the factories and every stranger's face I see Reminds me that I long to be Homeward bound I wish I was Homeward bound Home where my thoughts escaping Home where my music's playing Home where my love lies waiting silently for me Tonight I'll sing my songs again I'll play the game and pretend But all my words come back to me In shades of mediocrity 
Like emptiness and harmony, I need someone to comfort me. Homeward bound, a wish I was. Homeward bound, home where my thoughts escaping, home where my music's playing, home. Where my love lies waiting silently for me Silently for me Cantor Baron! Yeah. So the next song, the last song we're going to do um, in its ori original Russian, goes back to the early 1900s uh, with recordings in Russia as early as uh, 1925, really. And in the uh, late 50s, Theodore Bikel recorded it in its original Russian. Then in the early 60s, a Greenwich Village folk singer named uh, Jean Raskin, who had grown up hearing the song in Russian, wrote English lyrics to it. And the Limelighters recorded it and I recorded the English version in, in a 62, and RCA released it as a single, but uh, didn't sell that much. Um, Raskin and his wife, Francesca, performed as a duo internationally, and they were playing in a club in London in 1969, and Paul McCartney walked in, and he, he it's a club he went to a lot. He heard the song. And he said, I've got to record this with somebody. And the Beatles had just opened Apple Records at that time. And he had this singer named Mary Hopkin. So they recorded the song, and it became a big international hit around the world. And, oh, well, I guess that was redundant. Uh, how could it be an international hit not around the world? Um, and you all know it, and you can sing along. And but first, but first, but first, I'd like to thank the wonderful performers tonight. Down there on the banjo and guitar and wonderful vocals, Ed Lebowitz. Next to him, Mike Sirota. We all know Mike. Our own Cindy Paley. Back here, master of Sephardic music, Asher Levy. Tonight, the bass man. I'd like to thank very much Art Podell for joining us tonight. What a treat. Yeah. And very much like to thank our host for the evening, Master David Budin. And let's thank Cantor Phil Barron, putting it all together. Once there was a time was a tavern where we used to raise a glass or two. Remember how we laughed away the hours and think of all the great things we would do. Those were on the way If by chance I'd see you in the tavern We'd smile at one another and we'd say
Nothing seemed the way it used to be. In thy glass I saw a strange reflection. Was that lonely woman really me? Those were Shabbat service. Come all of you. 